Good afternoon. Thank you all for coming to this seminar. My uh, topic for this afternoon is on uh, crop insurance as a resiliency measure to climate change. Evidence from uh, corn farmers in the Philippines. We conducted a study in uh, 2012 and uh, finished it in 2014. Uh, hopefully, we can uh, publish this uh, material. We're doing uh, a sequel to this uh, 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 study, uh, which is on, but still, uh, we're still doing the runs after, which is on adaptive selection.
which is Ballet Chef for uh, running for uh, uh, Blue Rice. And for core, there is also a cup recommended package in the agricultural practice. Check the website of the Department of Agriculture. You will see the gap recommendation. But at present, little is known on why farmers ensure and or adopt good agricultural practices and what factors can possibly influence adoption. So the objectives of our study was uh, essentially to identify existing gap technologies related to pests and disease, climate change resilience in corn production, evaluate psychological, socioeconomic, and demographic determinants of insurance and gap adoption, assess the perception level and level of awareness on corn insurance and gap among corn farmers, and uh, identify appropriate intervention measures to improve adoption of gap and the formulation and effectiveness of the whole insurance program. Just to give you a brief idea of what is the whole insurance program in the Philippines, it was, uh, uh, PCIC was created in 1978. I think uh, the whole insurance program came out in 1979 or 1980. There are two types of cover being offered by the Philippine uh, PC, uh, Crop Insurance Corporation. This is the multi-risk cover and the natural disaster cover. Natural disaster cover uh, covers for uh, natural calamities, you know, drought, uh, floods, uh, earthquake, etc., typhoons. The multi-risk cover includes natural disaster plus pest and disease damage. Okay. So we just add pest and disease damage to the natural disaster cover. Now, just like any other insurance, it has uh, the farmers pay premium okay, to be covered. Uh, more than half of the premium, however, is subsidized by government. 16% uh, uh, the uh, premium rates right now for corn uh, crop insurance is 16% for low risk, up to 22% for high risk. So uh, the insurance company classifies you whether you are low risk or a high risk farmer. So, but out of the 16%, for example, more than half of that is subsidized by government. 30% uh, on the average is subsidized by government. So on, the farmer only pays about 3%. Uh, uh, Isabella, the remaining amount is also subsidized by the local government. So the partner practically pays, does not pay anything, does not pay the premium. Okay? So it's basically free for some farmers that are, you know, that uh, uh, are being supported by the local government in Sabella. Now for uh, the total corn farmers served for the period 1982 to 2012, uh, about 504,056 farmers have been covered. And at its peak in 1990, it served more than 40,000 corn farmers just for one year. Now, for uh, uh, in 2012, more than 12,271 uh, farmers were insured, and 3,565 were able to claim indemnities. Okay. About more than half of this were borrowing farmers. Okay. Uh, right now, there's a production loan that is being offered by government. Okay. But before you can access the loan, you have to insure by PCIC. That's a requirement for, in, for you to be able to access the production loan. The indemnity is paid in 2012 amounted to about 27.39 million. 16.8 million was for natural disaster. So more than half of this was for natural disaster. Now for uh, uh, the analysis in the study, uh, we have these estimation methods and empirical approach 
for the survey design and data description, the data used in the analysis came from the 2012-2013 face-to-face survey of corn farm household in Sabela, Pangasinan, and Bukidnon provinces. Uh, as you will see, in the, these are the locations. These are the uh, major uh, areas, all areas also, and at the same time, major uh, insurance subscribers of, on uh, corn insurance in the country. We uh, interviewed a total of 426 corn farm households from 12 villages using a, a multi-state stock pipeline or something in two stock uh, insured and not insured. Variables used in, uh, include, the variables that we collected include six farmer characteristics, uh, for example, uh, age, uh, gender, uh, ownership, uh, household size, etc. And then uh, three extension variables, uh, visits of, uh, of uh, visits, distance from extension office, and then, uh, oh yeah, we collected visits of uh, extension, extension uh, technicians. Two location dummy, uh, because we have three locations, so we have two location dummies. And this is uh, for Okidno and uh, Pangasinan. And more importantly, uh, we included psychometric variables. These are behavioral variables, which includes cognitive ability, attitude towards gap, good agricultural practice, and risk preference. So, uh, we would like to know whether these uh, uh, behavioral variables influence uh, adoption of insurance and adoption of good agricultural practice. For the estimation, we, in order for us to piece out the effect of these variables on uh, adoption, probability of adoption, uh, we use a probability regression model. Okay. Uh, the right hand side, as I told you, we have uh, several variables for variables, uh, behavioral variables, uh, institutional variables, etc. And uh, for for uh, since uh, for the adopt adoptions, since uh, the left hand side or the dependent variables are, is no longer continuous, just like uh, unlike uh, the determinants for insurance adoption, uh, we have positive numbers, few positive numbers plus zero. Uh, the most appropriate model to use is the Poisson. Poisson regression, okay? where gap is a count beta from 0 to 11. This is the number of uh, good agricultural practice being adopted by the farmer. Okay. The results. Uh, in table 1, you will see that pests and diseases and drought were the major hazard for production. And uh, farmers try to adopt measures to mitigate this risk. Uh, yeah, you will see here, oops. Uh, pest disease uh, in all locations, but uh, drought were quite prominent in Bukidnon and strong winds in Bukidnon. So basically, the, uh, the, the risk they face uh, were uh, peasant diseases and drought and typhoon. Now, for farmers' strategies uh, to manage risk of drought graveyard, uh, they strongly agree of using uh, uh, of using own uh, uh, funds. Uh, borrow money uh, from uh, or loan uh, 
from uh, credit institutions engage in livelihood uh, projects, but they quite disagree in uh, they quite disagree in uh, uh, using uh, in uh, changing their planting dates. Okay, they quite disagree in uh, changing their planting dates and uh, selling farm properties. They also, uh, uh, one strategy is to buy insurance, uh, buy crop insurance, as shown here. Now, farmers in Bukidnon preferred the multi risk cover, while natural disaster cover was the choice in Isabella. As you will know, uh, Isabella is in the typhoon belt. So most farmers would prefer the natural calamity uh, product or the big green And uh, while in Bukidnon, uh, it's multi-risk cover because they have drought and at the same time uh, uh, attack of uh, pest diseases. Okay. So this table will show you the average premium pay by the by the farmer for the multi-risk cover and the average indemnity uh, that uh, they will uh, receive. Look, the average premium paid is quite low simply because of the subsidy given by government and given by the local government. And this is also true for uh, the natural disaster cover. The main reasons for buying insurance was to access credit. Uh, this was true for uh, all the uh, those that we interviewed. Uh, those at the scene, uh, uh, those who bought insurance were all accessing credit, except for eight partners. They were self-financed. Okay. So, uh, and they buy insurance to a peace of mind which is all indicative already of moral hazard. Okay? For that buying, the major reason is that it is just an added cost. Okay? So, as you will see down here, oops, sorry, here, as you will see here, it's just an added cost. Uh, they have a lot of funds to buy the insurance, and some even uh, will find that uh, they do not know what insurance is all about. Okay. But many were uh, refused to answer. As you will see here, uh, more than half the farmers did not give an answer. In the last four years, we asked the farmers uh, uh, how many they have adopted, how many gap they have adopted. Uh, and uh, this is the result. Many have used the varieties uh, that are resistant to pest diseases. Uh, they use chemical weed control, etc. But but uh, uh, use of IPA methods was not frequently used by the farmer. This is the good agricultural practice that is being recommended by the department. As you will know, for natural calamity, I think uh, the good agricultural practice here that they can uh, follow is uh, crop rotation and uh, change in uh, planting planting day. Planting day is not here. Actually, we don't have that. Which is. Uh, which uh, we ask farmers if they are willing to change their planting date, but they do not. Many uh, said that they would not want to change their planting date. Why? Because if you change your planting date, all the pest diseases will be on you if you are late or advanced. Okay. Now, uh, for the regression, uh, profit regression, uh, five factors significantly influence corn insurance adoption, as you will see in this table age, younger, younger 
farmers are adapting. Okay. Assumed by the market uh, by the uh, uh, marginal effects, negative marginal effects here. Uh, marginal effects is just like elasticity. So a one unit change in any of this variable will change the probability of reduction by that much. Okay. So credit was also significant and it's positive simply because uh, the insurance was attached to the credit. Okay. You need you need to have insurance in order to access the loan. <coughs> Distance to market was negative and significant. Oops. And uh, but a membership to farmers organization was positive and uh, simply because uh, uh, PCIC was talking in some areas to organizations and then uh, uh, to sell their products. Gap score was also significant uh, and negative, meaning if you buy insurance, they reduce their good agricultural practice, which is also indicative of moral hazard. Now for the Poisson regression, uh, for the Poisson regression, those that are highlighted as the significant variables, uh, we have also the marginal effects, but what is interesting here is that IRR, incidence rate ratio. The result the results will tell us that uh, incidence rate, a one unit change, for example, in uh, age, one unit change in 15 years, if that is significant, it will make a one, uh, a change of one good agricultural practice. Okay? So, oops. Corn insurance, is negative, meaning as farmers insure, they reduce their good agricultural practice by one good agricultural practice, as shown by 0.96. Okay, you follow? If the uh, farmer is uh, owner operated, if the farmer is an owner operator, uh, this is dummy. Uh, if he is an older operator, then he increases his adoption of good agricultural practice by one good agricultural practice. Okay. Now, the same, uh, what is interesting here is risk preference. If this is negative, which indicates that if farmers are uh, if farmers are uh, 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 less risk covers, they adopt one more good agricultural practice. Okay. If they are less risk covers, if they are risk covers, for example, maybe they also reduce by one one good agricultural practice. This the market is negative and uh, significant and distance to nearest road is positive meaning uh, it uh, positively influences uh, the adoption of agricultural practice okay by one one unit here uh, and so on uh, this one d2 is Bukitnon, meaning farmers in Bukitnon are more likely to adopt one additional good agricultural practice. So for conclusion, conclusions and policy implication, one, the positive and significant effect of credit and farmers organization in for insurance adoption, farmers with loans and those affiliated with uh, uh, farmers organization can broaden corn insurance market. So uh, probably PCIC target these uh, farmers' organizations. Call farmers near the road, but distant 
from the market are the more likely insurance adapters. An additional gap is adapted by increasing the park area. Distances to extension and insurance offices and farmers that are likely risk covers. I'm, 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 uh, 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 pointing out uh, uh, measures that can possibly broaden the insurance market. Gap is inversely related to corn insurance manifesting moral hazard, but the subsidy by government diminishes its effects to farmers. This, however, is not sustainable in the long run due to high variability of fund allocation. Sometimes the government uh, uh, allocates a big money. Last year, uh, uh, President Aquino uh, added 1 billion pesos to the Philippine Crop Insurance Program. So that is good. Okay. But if the economy is performing very well, but probably in some years where it has uh, performed badly, then you don't expect an additional budget coming from government. Also, the gap recommended measures were for pests and diseases. As you will see in the uh, package that was uh, recommended by DA, it was basically for pests and diseases. We need to look at gap measures for climate change. And this we need to ask from the Department of Agriculture what is the package that they recommend good agricultural practice for uh, natural calamities. In the meantime, that more gaps are not yet in place, and with increasing frequency of climatic events, corn insurance is necessary to protect the farmers. If government intends to slowly reduce subsidy, and at the same time provide farmers resilience to climate change, they can look at the promise of strengthening gap adoption, particularly to large owner-operated farms that are distant from, market, from the market, and insurance office. That's all. And uh, before I end, I'd like to make some acknowledgments. Uh, Share sure for funding this research. Uh, Dr. Sabini, focus on Sibiria. For PCIC, who helped us in uh, the data collection, Mr. Kapuko and the regional monitors of our study areas, uh, in our study areas. Municipal extension workers and barangay captains in the sun sites. Uh, Karen Tiloy, who was uh, for providing us research assistance, research assistance in the early phase of the study. By the way, my co author uh, is here, uh, Filipinas. Uh, we presented the same paper in uh, this year at the uh, annual conference of the Crop Science Society of the Philippines, and it was uh, adjudged the best paper. Insurance and good agricultural practice will be substitutes. 
But as I have said, in the meantime, that good agricultural practices are not available, we can rely on government services. Okay. So there are substitutes. No studies yet, as, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Indonesia has a study. <laughs> Same results. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you very much for the presentation. And I think you really sort of touched on the problem with this multiple parallel crop insurance. The biggest thing being moral hazard, yes. Yeah. So along with that, you have adverse selection. Also, you have problems with the costs going up because you have to actually go to see the indemnity in the field. So especially, let's say you have to go through Manila traffic, well, you know, your adjuster loses three hours there already. So the point is that these programs are quite expensive, the MPCI programs. And it seems like the biggest demand is for natural disasters like drought and flooding. So I'm wondering if there's been any investigations into weather index insurance, which is uh, much more affordable and kind of also deals with these issues of moral hazard, the, the high transaction costs as well as uh, adverse selection. Uh, uh, the the index-based insurance is now being uh, contemplated by PCIC. I think uh, right now it's uh, they it, is, it has been uh, uh, offered in uh, tri on a trial basis on few in Iloilo, I think, and in Agusa. Okay, they're trying to uh, look at the weather-based index. Uh, so. I do not know if they will uh, uh, completely implement this all over the country. But based on our last discussion, it has been favored uh, over, but they will not leave the other products. The other products will be maintained, but uh, they will insert a new product, which is index based, uh, to address some of the problems that you encounter with uh, the uh, regular products that they offer. Uh, there are some advantages, on, uh, many advantages for the index space, but there are also disadvantages. Okay. Yeah. Can I follow up? Uh, sorry, I'm again. So, uh, what you were saying earlier with the being substitutes, the, the gap practices and uh, index insurance are just completely right. Uh, so, my question is, too, is if you can require that farmers go through the, the gap practice training, a training program, for example order to access insurance, much like, you know, you have to have insurance to access credit. And you think that that would have a more positive effect, uh, effect because now you have farmers with the, the knowledge to manage the, the pests and disease and other risks that aren't related to weather, and they also have some protection against animals. Well, uh, actually, PCIS is doing that. They are uh, doing uh, training programs whenever, wherever they go. They support training programs uh, together with the Department of Agriculture. And I think one component of this is the one component of the program is the good cultural Yeah. Uh, just to clarify on the yeah. PCIC, so right now they're just really, since its majority is uh, from the government uh, subsidized, only a small percent is really coming from a share of farmers. Meaning, uh, I think it's uh, for the areas that we have covered. That is what is uh, coming up. Yeah. But uh, for the whole Philippines, you will know that uh, here, Uh, PhD student in agricultural economics. 
Uh, I have one question like this because I read a lot of Facebook and paper they said that in long, long runs, yes, in the long, long runs, insulin market is fair. Yes, insulin market in uh, agricultural sector is fair. Because agricultural sector is very high risk, risky. So, how we can apply insulin market for the long, long run as the uh, adaptation strategy for climate change because in the long run it will be failed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the studies have shown all over the world that farmers do not want to pay the premium for crop insurance, for crop insurance. That is a fact. Okay? They do not they want to be insured but they do not want to pay the uh, premium basically. So in most countries, even in the US it is subsidized uh, right now. Because if you don't subsidize, farmers will not buy insurance, basically. So probably we can look at other uh, uh, measures that can motivate farmers to buy insurance aside from subsidies. But if you're a rich country, why not subsidize? Let's for example, for the Philippines, maybe if we are if we have money, then we can subsidize. But if we don't. So in the long run measure, I think it's not sustainable. Okay. You keep on subsidizing farmers. Maybe you can look at the good agricultural practice now, rather than uh, looking at the crop insurance. Okay. Yes, yes. So how about, uh, it's very interesting, but how about looking at farmer behavior in terms of what coping mechanisms is beyond insurance? Because if farmers do learn as well uh, over time, do, have you seen some patterns of mm. how they adopt at their level? No, we did not try that on the coping mechanisms. Because sometimes the farmers do innovate and they learn from experience, which is rather different yeah. by actually studying them. Uh, but they have the experience on their side and in the process they develop their own mechanisms, their own a setup that can be observed. Yeah. Yeah. But maybe you can follow up the study. And, uh, <laughs> you can follow up on the study and look at uh, whether farmers are doing this coping mechanisms. So, uh, actually, it was not. Uh, we thought about it in the study, but we didn't do it because of the, the posture that was getting so too long. Too long. Only in the psychometric uh, variables only it included already several opinions. Because uh, for the risk preference, we have to, uh, uh, in order for, to uh, elicit the risk uh, behavior of the farmer, we have to pose hypothetical questions. Okay? Uh, and uh, based on the answers of the farmer, we consider him uh, as uh, risk averse or less risk averse. Okay. Yes, please. Uh, am I right in the understanding that if uh, farmers uh, avail of crop insurance, they uh -huh. will be more resilient to climate change? Right now, yes, because you, they are able to uh, plant again in the next season. They have the money. For example, they were hit by a calamity uh, on the season. Yeah. They become resilient because they can uh, get money from PCIC and then use this money to buy again uh, inputs. But uh, I think these are assumptions that you're saying. What I'm trying to point out is uh, the, the data, the information that we generate from this study, there is uh, a direct uh, relationship that we can say that indeed such relationship exists. For instance, I was expecting that the study would correlate, say, in the three provinces. The first study, uh, you generate uh, secondary data on grain stands the number of grains that, you know, fall during a certain period of time and then correlated with the number of farmers that adopted 
And then, you know, what happened? Uh, are there direct relationships saying that, you know, things like that? I, I was thinking of that kind of data to be uh, discussed. Yes, uh, what you mentioned, I thought it are just assumptions. Well, uh, that can be an extension again of uh, the study because what we are uh, trying just to look at in this uh, study was the factors that affect adoption. The determinants of adoption, that's it. And uh, for gut and for crop insurance, crop insurance. So that thing can be an extension just like that, uh, as uh, what was mentioned by uh, Jenny here. Uh, that could be an extension of the program in, of this study. So if you are interested, then you can probably make a proposal to share that again. <laughs> to do the study. We have room for one last comment for clarification. Nobody yes. else. I've had my turn a couple of times. So. <laughs> So kind of following up uh, with this comment, well maybe if you don't mind, I can say that there, there is a lot of research on this topic and I'd say that agricultural insurance certainly increases resiliency because what happens next is you will either consume savings, if you have it, you'll take a bank loan if you have it, if you have the, if the access to credit, or the most, um, the, the worst off, what they end up doing is they sell their means of, of production and that's when you really can't engage in agriculture the following year because maybe you no longer you know have have the seeds or you don't have the equipment to, to get the seeds in the ground. So that's where it's, it's dangerous. Uh, and but to follow up on your question, I was actually quite curious as well as to if you ever put some consideration to using previous weather as an explanatory variable, a right hand side variable. Oh okay. uh, and if I can squeeze one short, short question in do you have any insight as to why there was this disadoption from the peak in 1990 to where it is in 2012? Why, why what? The, the disadoption, because it says here that there were 40,000 corn farmers that were enrolled in the program in 1990, but when you come to 2012, it's been reduced to 12,271. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I will answer that one first. It's because it is attached to the uh, fund allocation given by government. So if the farm allocation is small, the amount, the number of farmers that can be served by PCIC will be also be small. Okay. Uh, in fact, on the average from 2,100, it's about 5,000 farmers. Now. But last year, it increased because of the money that was given by President Okay. Uh, the other question that you asked, if you consider it because oh, no, the weather, the, the weather, because oh. climate seems to be one of the biggest reasons for yeah. Climate. So uh, we just uh, one we we had difficulty in trying to look for a variable that we capture the weather. That's one. Uh, rainfall. We were thinking of rainfall to include uh, uh, as a measure to. Uh, as a measure that can influence uh, and should adoption sooner uh, uh, We decided that we could. Okay. Uh, I tried number of typhoons too, but uh, it, did, uh, it would be expected that it will not give uh, good results if it's number of typhoons. So probably. Uh, those that are thinking of extending the study, you can uh, go to uh, weather variables. So that's just very one, very one last one. So you kind of are on the way it's presented, so you send data and again with, uh, basic, on the basic information. Uh, like you mentioned, of course your data set is 12 and 13, I think, for the last four years, was it? I was okay. the, the way the PCIC we had extreme weather events in the last four years yeah, versus right. the claimants of yeah, that yeah, insurance. Yeah. It might just help picture the, the presentation a little oh, bit. Yeah, Maybe the, just to show yeah. the things. Actually, in the, in the report, we show the same because it is shown. But, uh, you know, uh, for this, if you say who knows, I know what would like. <laughs> he has time limits for his presentation. Yeah.
I have sub we submitted already a report to show us. If you, if you are interested, we can ask everything there. So, with that, yeah, um